Tony Brown again. I'm an auto worker at uh, Diamond Price here in Nice Center. And uh, the, the thing I'm getting, you know, I, I health care as far as the big three is pretty much secure. You know, they're talking about giving up concessions. Uh, we're going to have to give and take some, but you know, I would like to see the health care for everybody as a whole because uh, I'm a working person, I have the best uh, health care, but then my, my neighbor or the person in the community don't have health care at all. So whatever I can do or we can do to make it fair for everybody to have health care because I don't feel good about, you know, I can go to the doctor, but you got to die because you can't go to the doctor. So I think health care should be for everybody. Just one more comment on this. You know, uh, the auto companies are coming here. They're complaining about their health care costs, but have they really been out there working for national health care? They should be, and they're not. So we would like to send that message to them that we need their help on this issue. Yes, we we saw the popularity of the hybrid when it first came out. The people were waiting a year or so to get one of these cars. And the public seems to be screaming now for the plug-in hybrid, yet it's not being offered in the United States. Don't you think that that's a way that, that could save the industry by coming out with the first American-made plug-in hybrid? I think uh, I, I think they want all the, the new technologies brought to the United States as quickly as possible, but I don't think everything's going to happen overnight. It's going to take a little time to, to change the industry and get it moving in the right direction. And I think that's exactly what this loan could do for the industry. Is it could give them a chance to retool and make the cars that we need to sell here in the United States. And I think these, these guys need this money so that we can change the plants over, start buying products from American suppliers. We need to change some of the laws, is what I'd like to see, where any jobs that have been outsourced historically to foreign nations that for lesser pay, maybe a tariff system on the, the products coming back in, so that would encourage local American uh, workers or, or companies to start creating parts for these vehicles, for the plug-in hybrid, or the battery, or the bolt, or any of the parts and components that aren't going to be made in the United States that need to be made right here in the United States for UAW workers to be built. That's what I'd like to see. Sorry if I didn't answer your question completely, but I know. We, we would like to see NAFTA repealed. We are never for it. We think since it went into effect, we can see the negative consequences of it, and that's another aspect. Or modified to fit the needs of the auto industry. Okay, up here. I'm just going to follow up on my inner question. The Tony Brown production of electric cars, uh, the issue of, uh, I think that uh, the, 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 the folks that are, who are left out of that dialogue right now are the majority of workers in this country who are going to be impacted by these decisions, and I think that there should be oversight over what the, uh, over what the Detroit Three do to move forward, and in light of what I said earlier, that we are all faced with the question of global warming, and we really have to get these auto companies to behave and to act uh, responsibly uh, in light of all of our needs uh, in the future for a, a safe and secure environment. So I just want to touch on something. And, and just to, to just touch on this, but, you know, uh, General Motors, Ford Price are asking for $34 billion, and they want to remove the, the executive of General Motors. So how many people do they want to remove from Citigroup for wanting four, 40, or what is it, 400? Billion? I'm, I'm thinking that's a lot of floors they're going to have to clear in that building. So before they start calling for resignations, they need to check 
what they've already done and correct that situation. Okay, last question and then we'll uh, do it. Sure. Um, uh, speaking of incentivizing things, uh, do you guys worry that the the current rhetoric that seems to be a little bit anti auto worker anti union uh, may jeopardize the potential uh, people who would be part of a green revolution? I mean, fourteen dollars an hour, no pension, no benefits. I mean, if we really need this done, is the way that this shakes out could that have an impact on people who would be a part of a green jobs revolution? Do you think? I'm not sure that I understood your question, but I would say this, that uh, we believe that they would have gone, the, the big three, the Detroit three, would have gone into bankruptcy like Delphi did uh, in a heartbeat, uh, were it not for the fact that they sell their products to the public. And that that's the only thing that's holding them back, and the only the incentive for going into the bankruptcy is to... Uh, uh, basically destroyed the UAW and as they did in Delphi and to do away with the agreements that we've had that we've built over 70 years and to do that is to make us uh, make auto workers as part of the working poor and we think that that in that manner we're not going to play any kind of role in the greening of America in the future and I think that uh, it would be a, a terrible mistake you know, one thing that has happened is that there's been greater and greater division promoted among different groups of workers here in the United States. And that has to be overcome, and that's why we're promoting the Employee Free Choice Act, which Obama has supported, but there's not a lot of knowledge about it. It is the way forward to allow workers to go into unions. It's democratic because when the majority are for the union, then it goes in. They acknowledge their support by signing a card. If you had workers in the United States in unions, we feel it would be more democratic in terms of participation in the process, and it would raise up the living standard of everyone and stop the race to the bottom. The UAW has long been the benchmark for manufacturing standards for working people as far as wage and benefits. You know, as those things go down and more concessions are demanded of them, uh, is, does that undermine the, this idea that these are the very same workers that we're asking to uh, help solve the issues of climate change? Well, I think that's the best question I've heard at this press conference. I think uh, linking together the struggle against concessions and the need for uh, a green economy and uh, an environmental policy, linking those two together is, is a great way to put it. I think that if you're going to tell new hires you're going to make half or less than what workers were making, it's a declaration of war on those new hires, saying you can't have children, you can't have a new car, and uh, so you would have to declare war on us to be able to have kids and have a car. Except we're so confident that we have defeated you that we can do it and get away with it. In other words, it's a declaration of class war, in case anybody didn't already know there is a class war, and we're confident that we can just walk on you like that. And by the way, we'd like you to save the planet. That will not work. You've got to treat people like human beings in order to have a common struggle to, uh, for, to save the environment. So that leads me to the idea that, uh, in fact, something even broader than these two issues is needed until workers are running uh, the government and the government is running the economy, we can't really have a green revolution.